Knox. So that uh, battery on NXT, I'm not sure it's Tegan Knox, but uh, it could be. I guess we'll find out tonight. I hope for her sake, because I, I, God let her body hold up. You know, there was so much potential with her, and I know they they looked at her as a real future star, and it has been injury after injury and the knee blowing out and this it just it's it's been terrible for her so i'm glad she's going to be able to make it back you know hopefully her body stays with her hopefully they don't lose you know faith in what she could be uh which which happens after people get hurt you know time after time after time it's tough to rely on somebody who always gets hurt and that's so sad when it's not you know up to their doing and it's their body failing them so god bless her hopefully she can stay in there all right, here's the Raw Report, everybody. Let's get this thing done. It was a show. It was, uh, I would say that the show was not bad, nor would I say the show was good. Although, it had bad stuff and good stuff on it. So let's fairly look at it here. First, we had one of those segments that they used to do where everybody in Money in the Bank comes out and says some stuff. And in the old days, it would all be about how they wanted to get the briefcase and win the championship. But it's uh, 2021 WWE, and uh, it was just all comedy. Everyone's making jokes. Ha ha, laugh, laugh. And then a brawl broke out, and do you guys care? I don't need nope. to recap it. All right, so then we had John Morrison versus Ricochet. Last week, John Morrison and Ricochet had a match, and they went to a double count out. So they do a match again, and this time, there's a big dive spot that gets all botched, which they still showed a replay of multiple times, by the way, which is funny. And, uh, by the way, not to do a Dave Meltzer digression, but you know what's really funny? WWE has that uh, Twitter account. I don't know if you guys are aware of what Twitter is, but anyway, WWE has one. And if you ever watch Raw or SmackDown, they have some bloke or a female, I'm not sure who it is, but they watch the show and they they get little uh, animated GIFs of the action and they put them on Twitter, okay? So, like, if... Uh, you know, Ricochet does a springboard high cross and knocks John Morrison over the barricade. They, you know, they, whatever, call it, screen cap it with motion. But anyway, they put it on Twitter. Do you know how many times there has been a horrible botch on Raw or SmackDown? And whoever this is that's in charge of this Twitter account, <laughs> they have no clue. And so they put it online and they go oh wow amazing and i watch and i'm like you put that on twitter that well. spot right there so anyway they did something ricochet i think it was trying some torneo high cross over the top rope to knock morrison to the ground but like it gets totally botched they crash and burn morrison does a deal where he immediately jumps up and looks over to make sure the guy's alive and uh then uh ricochet goes to get back into the ring but miz blocks him with a wheelchair and so Morrison wins via count out. There are so many bad finishes on this show. Jinder Mahal's now a biker. He's upset because he sent Drew McIntyre a tweet, but he used the number two instead of the word two, which sounds like somebody sent Vince a text and did that, and Vince is, like, irrationally upset about it. Now it's a storyline. <laughs> so they had a match later. We had uh, Naomi and Nikki Ash. It's one of those things. Naomi's supposed to be a baby face. But, like, Nikki Ash is being all friendly, and she's in her superhero costume, and she's all excited she wants to win Money in the Bank. And then Naomi has to get all cranky about it. No, Nikki, I'm going to win Money in the Bank. I'm like, what a group of dislikable characters these are. So we have Eva Marie, Dewdrop, Naya, and Shayna against Alexa, Naomi, Asuka, and Nikki Ash. Nikki Ash, the former Nikki Cross, because Karrion Cross is coming in, Nikki Ash... If you guys have been paying attention, she had that run where she beat Charlotte, she beat Rhea, she beat both of them. She's on this win streak, as they call it. And uh, now, all of a sudden, there's an eight-woman tag. You've got Naomi in there, and Eva, and Dewdrop, and Shayna Baszler, who I can't even understand why she didn't do a job this week, because that's her role. And they beat Nikki Ash! Way to get that superhero over. I believe in myself now. Eva Marie, I think it's supposed to be heat that, like, Eva Marie can't wrestle at all, and she gets in the ring and does a horrible kick and then immediately tags out. Total wrong kind of heat. It's like, why am I watching this? 
And we had uh, some other stuff. <laughs> Lashley at MVP, <laughs> talking about Kofi. Mustafa Ali and Mansoor had two minutes and 52 seconds. They worked so hard, but like they never do anything with either guy, so I imagine this lost millions of viewers. But they do a match, and uh, Ali gets his foot caught in the ropes. Mansoor is a nice guy. He helps him get his foot out of the ropes. Ali immediately cradles him and pins him. Ali's trying to teach him to turn to the dark side. <laughs> we have a McIntyre promo. This is one of those WWE things where McIntyre did a promo like a month ago, and he told this story about a Scottish king. And because Drew McIntyre is great at his job, he managed to take this material, and he did a good job with it. So then they've decided every week he needs to tell some wacky tale. <laughs> and every week it's get th This week he told some story about the Loch Ness Monster, and as a guy who used to do After Dark Radio, like, it's Loch Ness Monster. Not the wrestler, the actual uh, Nessie. He talks for like an hour, and it, it hit me. It's like... Every week now. Next week, he's going to have some other story. They're going to make him do another story the week after that. This is the blessing and the curse of being able to successfully do what they want you to do when they give you some dumb script. If they give you a dumb script and you, and you make it work, you're done for, buddy. You're going to get a stupid script every week after that. Then he faced Jinder Mahal and... And Jinder Mahal, remember when Jinder Mahal was champion? Mm. I mean, he was, he was, he was all right in the ring. My standards are much lower nowadays. He was all right in the ring back then, but he wasn't like all that great. And then he was gone for like a year and a half or something like that. He's just now come back. This is like his second match since he was gone for a year and a half. So one would think that like, the guy's got to have a ring rust or something. And granted, he's in there with Drew McIntyre, but this match was so much better than I expected. They went 10 minutes, and then Veer and Shankly ran in for the disqualification. Shanky. After all that time, after 10 minutes, and then and then Jinder steals his sword. So this feud must continue. Drew McIntyre is feuding with Jinder Mahal over his sword. If I would have told you... If we would have done the prediction show when Drew McIntyre was champion in the King of Raw, if we would have done the prediction show and I would have said, in July of this year, Drew McIntyre will be feuding with Jinder Mahal and the guy from the Disney movie and Shankly Shanky. over Drew's sword. Don't correct me, Mike. You would say, no way. Well, way. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> Then we had a New Day promo, and let me tell you something. That was a Kofi promo. If I ran this company, Kofi Kingston's winning that title from Lashley. This Hell dude yeah. has been a phenomenon the last several weeks now. He is such a great promo. He is such a great babyface. He stands head and shoulders above like 95% of this roster. He's so great. This was a fantastic promo here. Talking about the Lashley match of the pay-per-view in the main event tonight. Lucha House Party and Mason T-Bar. Mason T-Bar beat him up the whole match, and then uh, they get pinned. Whatever. Then we have some more uh, goofy stuff with Riddle. And then Riddle versus AJ. This match was also great. Why? Because how many times has there been somebody with some sort of leg injury, and they sell and they sell, but then it's time for their comeback, and they run and they jump and they flip and then Dave has to say, well, back in uh, the 70s, everyone blew their comeback. Uh, listen, I don't care what they did. I don't care what people do anywhere else. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. If your legs hurt, no, you cannot run during your comeback. No, you cannot jump. And Riddle could not run, and he could not jump, and he could not lift the guy up for anything on his shoulders. This match was great because of the selling of Matt Riddle AJ working over his leg. The story of the match was better because his legs hurt. Of course he can't do his comeback. And finally he ends up cradling this guy after a distraction from the Viking Raiders. This was a good match. Charlotte and Rhea have a lightsaber duel with crutches. I can't even believe what I was watching. And I got another story, but I can't tell it right now. 
Jackson Riker in Truth versus Elias and Cedric Alexander. If you Twitch homies want me to talk about Jackson Riker after the break, I will. But, I mean, this is not a black and white issue here. Anyway, uh, so in one minute, okay, in one minute, all of the 24-7 geeks ran in. Akira Tozawa and Truth fought over the title. Truth chased Tozawa to the back, so he's out of the match. Elias is then afraid to get in the ring with Riker, so he's out of the match. This leaves Riker and Cedric together, and Riker pins him. All of that happened in one minute and four seconds. Children can get made that time, Brian. It's amazingly, time some people. amazingly, we have four matches for Raw next week. Ricochet, John Morrison, Falls Count Anywhere. Sheamus versus Umberto Creo for the U.S. title, even though he's just chasing the 24-7 geeks. Almost an Eric. It almost his first Raw singles match. AJ and Ivar. And then AJ and almost defend against the Viking Raiders in two weeks. I couldn't even believe my eyes. Five announced matches over the next two weeks. And then the main event was Kofi and Xavier beating Lashley and MVP when MVP was pinned by Kofi. Makes sense. Good booking. But boy, was this match just there. And then the show ended. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.